Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to another episode of MCAT Bytes. In this video, we'll be diving deep into UV vis and infrared spectroscopy. These are two essential techniques for analyzing structure and properties of molecules. Understanding these concepts is crucial for the MCAT, so let's get started. First, let's focus on UV vis spectroscopy. This uses, well, UV, or ultraviolet and visible light, the vis, to interact with molecules. When a molecule absorbs UV or visible light, it causes electrons to be excited from their ground state and move to higher energy levels. The amount of light absorbed by a molecule at different wavelengths is measured using a UVIS spectroscometer, producing a spectrum that plots absorbance versus wavelength, which would look something like this. For the MCAT, you need to understand how to apply Beer Lambert's law to UVIS spectroscopy. And this is Beer Lambert's law. The law states that absorbance, A, of a solution is directly proportional to the concentration of the absorbing species and the path length, L, or sometimes B, of the sample, with the proportionality constant being the molar absorptivity. And that's this little epsilon thing. So this is just a constant. It's different for every single chemical compound. So our equation here then is just A equals epsilon Cl. Super easy equation to use, nothing too complicated here. The big concept is that as the absorbance increases, so does our concentration. So a darker solution, the more stuff in that solution. To know this, to use this equation, you'll need to know the molar absorptivity of the substance, which is a measure of how strongly it absorbs light at a specific wavelength. Molar absorptivity values are often given in the units of liters per mole per centimeter. Sometimes the MCAT will give you epsilon. Other times you'll have to find it by just setting up a system of two equations but definitely be sure to pay attention to units and convert them appropriately. If they give it to you in millimoles versus moles, well, we have a factor of 1,000 to deal with. UV-vis spectroscopy is particularly useful for analyzing molecules with conjugated systems, such as those containing multiple double bonds or aromatic rings. The more conjugated a molecule is, the longer the wavelength of light it can absorb. For the MCAT, you should be familiar with the approximate wavelength ranges absorbed by different types of molecules. An alkene, is about 190 to 200 nanomolars times are 180 to 190 nanomolars. The meals are higher at 280 to 300 nanometers, and aromatics are 250 to 280 nanometers. Now keep in mind that these are general ranges and the actual absorption wavelengths can be influenced by factors such as substituents and solvent effects, but you don't have to worry about that very much for the MCAT. Now we'll shift to IR, or infrared spectroscopy. This is huge for the MCAT. You are pretty much guaranteed to see a few questions on this. It works by using infrared light to cause vibrations in the bonds of molecules. Different types of bonds absorb infrared light at specific frequencies, measured in their wave number, or centimeters to the negative first. An IR spectrometer measures the amount of infrared light absorbed by a sample at different frequencies, producing a spectrum that plots transmittance or observance versus wave number. And we can see that on the side here, where we've got transmissance, then the wave number on the bottom. And this is positioned kind of weirdly, right? We see 4,000 wave number at the zero and 500 to the far right. So it actually gets smaller the farther we go to the right. This is just kind of a weird way to show things, but you'll notice that this is a common way to show things in different types of spectroscopy. For the MCAT, unfortunately, you must memorize the characteristic IR wave number ranges for common functional groups. Some of the most important ones are alcohols, and carboxylic acids, which are around the 3,200 to 3,600. And alcohol is going to have a really big peak there, which is kind of its telltale sign. The amines and amides, which are 330 to 350. You can kind of see that here. And the number of peaks will tell you which it is. So this has two peaks, which means it must have two hydrogens that are there to make two peaks. If we just saw one peak, that would mean that there was another carbon coming off of this nitrogen. And then the nitrile is a classic one at about 2,200. I really see a pretty steep peak there. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes are all really big. So the 2,800 to 3,000, kind of see that over here. It's usually pretty small. The carbonyl is a really, really important one to know, uh, characterized by being really big and deep and right around 1690 to 1760 centimeters. And the double bonded alkenes, we can see those around 1620 to 1680 is up in this region. 
sometimes we'd see it kind of peaking down here next to the carbonyl stretch, but sometimes the carbonyl stretch can cover it. So this is a much better one to be looking for. Then we see some amides at the 1550 to 1640. We have esters and ethers around 1,000 to 13,000 over here. This is usually tougher to identify. It's up here. The really big ones you want to pay attention to are carbonyls, your nitrogens, and an alcohol. Memorizing these ranges will help you quickly identify functional groups and unknown compounds to predict the IR spectra of molecules based on the structure, which if you know how to do this, it goes from a hard problem to something you can get in 10 seconds and move on. And this is just another way to visualize it. So the difference is in the y-axis. The top one we have transmittance, and in this one we have absorbance, which they're just the opposite. So we're sort of flipping it upside down. 99% of the, the time, the MCAT's going to show you transmittance, but just so you're not surprised, this is what absorbance would look like. Now let's practice applying this knowledge to some MCAT style problems. Say we have a solution of an unknown compound that has an absorbance of 0 0.3 at 420 nanomolars in a one centimeter cubette. If the concentration of the compound is 2.5 times 10 to the negative five molar, what is the molar absorptivity of the compound at this wavelength? So take a few minutes, think about what equation we might wanna use. And we should be thinking Beer Lambert. It's kind of hinting at us in the questions themselves here. So let's write out Beer Lambert's. That's A equals epsilon B C. Also A equals E. I think we called it L C above for length, but L and B are the same thing. So we can solve this pretty easily by rearranging it. And these are kind of the steps we take to rearrange it. So first we would divide A by B C, just plug on in, and we would get 12,000. Now, for example, two, an unknown compound produces an IR spectrum at the following peaks. One is at 3550, which is strong and broad. We've got one at 2950, which is medium, and a strong one at 1715, and a strong one at 1050. What of the following functional groups are most likely present in this compound? The key here is the 3350, saying strong and broad. This immediately makes me think we've got either a carboxylic acid or an alcohol. So I'm gonna see if we have either of those here. B says carboxylic acid, C says alcohol. Okay, so I'm liking both of these already, just based off of the 1350. And then the other telltale sign is strong. So 1715, that says it's strong, so that's gotta be the carbonyl peak. So this is telling us we've got a carbonyl and an alcohol. We know we don't have an amine because it doesn't describe the sort of udders over here. So we know we must have the alcohol and a carbonyl. And we know that because 13350 is the alcohol and the 1715 is our carbonyl. UV vis and IR are super powerful for analyzing structure and properties of molecules. For the MCAT, focus on mastering Beer Lambert's law for UV vis problems and memorizing the characteristic IR wave number ranges for common functional groups, especially focusing on carbonyl and alcohols. By practicing these concepts and applying them to various problems, you'll be very well prepared for the chem phys section. And I've even seen some IR questions on bio biochem. So you can get a lot of points if you master these. But thank you so much for watching our video on UVis, and I'll see you next time.